It's Table Talk Time. I'm Elle. I'm Murray. I'm Jen. I'm Jazza. And I'm Dave. And I have regrettably been given the power of sound effects tonight. Yeah! It's going to be a journey. Uh, I wanted to let you all know of a little bit of a change with what's happening now that we've been streaming on YouTube. Uh, basically, we are going to be removing the VOD a little bit sooner for non-members and uploading our episode a lot quicker. Uh, basically, to give you the short version, uh, the views and stuff mm. were kind of hurting the channel, splitting it so significantly, uh, and we really wanted like, this to reach the most people. We have people. thousands of views on the VOD, mm -hmm. but that's thousands of views that don't get on episode one, which yep. can hurt the series. So Absolutely. yeah, yeah. So it's basically, what's going to happen is we are going to be um, leaving the streams up for members only uh, the day after the stream. Otherwise, it's going to be wait for the VOD, but the VOD will be a lot sooner than they previously have been. Yeah, um, we are also a podcast, so you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcast or Google Podcast. Um, you can listen to us while you travel, while you work, uh, while you drive, um, eat or sleep. And uh, follow and rate us to help other people find our show. It really helps. Hell yeah. We are held aloft financially and lovingly buoyant by our <laughs> Patreon. Uh, you can join to directly support our show. We can dedicate more time and get you more episodes. Each season will be improving. Uh, I love also, that way of putting it. Without our patrons, we w would drown. We would die. Do you hear that? We would drown. We would literally <laughs> drown. The power is with you. <laughs> yeah, get access to our private Discord community and hang out with us after we stream every week in our patron after parties. Woo Which, side note, members also get access to view that after our live streams. Oh yeah. And we're using a prototype game called Gateway Roleplay. So you can go to gatewayroleplay.com for a little bit more info or to sign up for future announcements. It is a prototype. Uh, stuff won't go according to plan and we will fix stuff between episodes when things might be a little bit out of balance, but we feel like it's going to be a really great system that prioritizes roleplay and combat in some really fun ways. For more info, check out the video in the description. That sort of covers a little bit of how it works. But we're just going to jump straight into it. Shall we? Let's do it. As we enter the 1980s. And we are back in the Mendoza household as Sarah Mendoza has just been resettled by Meg upstairs. Downstairs, a group of young and excited teenagers play a game called Gateway for the first time. Dylan, the older brother of Callum, has been sort of strong-armed into showing them all this new game and they're enthusiastically playing along as they delve into their first ever adventure into the land of Zoso, the not-so-creatively named world by the musically influenced Dylan. We'll pick up our session as Meg re-enters the downstairs room, the basement. Oh my gosh, I thought you'd take forever! Look, it took a little while, okay? We've woke her up, you know, I had to settle down and assure her that, you know, the idea that there were many people in her house is not something to worry about. So. Sorry, Meg, is she okay? She'll be okay. We'll just we really have to keep it quiet, okay? Of course! Me included. <laughs> Cody, please. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just so excited. And she's asleep, right? So we're well, good. Well, currently. But the adventure was just getting really heated, so I'll yeah. do my best, but oh my gosh. It was exciting. <gasps> hey, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Well, um, I guess we can pick up. Now, what? I, I missed the laugh bit because of the crying, but it was uh, the Dark Lord Thalthrax or Anthrax or... Sounded bad. Come on, man. It was Vorath, the Ruinbringer. Vorath. Cody, Cody, I thought that was you crying. I'm sorry, my note, page, of, page of notes, I, I, it's on the other page. Uh, Vorath? Vora. Vora. That is so cool. You write notes for this thing? Of course you do. How are you going to remember the, all the names and places otherwise? Like, think of a character you come across, and like, four weeks later, you, you could be like, hey, what about Pot, the, the shopkeeper we met? It's a living world. Wow. Okay, so this isn't like a one-time thing. Like, you keep going. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> when we can fit it, you know. <laughs> hmm. So... Are we ready? We're ready. We're so ready. I think so. Hey, Callum, are you excited? Uh, yeah. Cool. 
Vorath, the Ruinbringer, stands tall. With blood dripping down his hands, he looms in front of the watchtower, and around him, swarms of his minions gather. They climb and clamber over the brickwork, heading towards you in numbers uncountable and far beyond your skills. We can't take this guy. Look at him. We must flee this place. Back down from the fight. I yes. agree, we are not cowards. Good on you. This is a fight you cannot win, my friends. This is Vorath the Ruinbringer, and the only thing we can do to help is travel north. We must, and Hendrax is like backing away, sort of pushing you back with his hands. We must bring message. If we die here, the guards died in vain. We must warn the people. I guess, but we will be back, right? Of course. Mm. We don't give up that easy, but it's too early. We will join the pile of corpses if we head in too soon. Another time. We'll have our vengeance for these brave men. But for now, how will we escape? And the sort of circle, the circle of minions sort of comes around the sides laboriously, slowly, as if enjoying their ability to taunt and prod their small impish, horrible things with horns and little sharp knives, and they're slowly backing you towards the corner. Our ability to make any sort of choice is uh, a window closing rapidly. Perhaps a distraction, and then a sprint in the opposite direction. Got Oswald. any ideas? Oswald? I can certainly do flashy. Around you, gathered in front of these beasts, you stand upon the mesa, the southernmost end of the spine. There are jagged rocks jutting out from the ground from some ancient calamity. You could perhaps attempt to leap and climb and make your way, not down, but across through the mess of mesas towards Crosstown, back the way you came, or could attempt the perilous but slightly safer climb down the side of the mesa, or perhaps, if you're really cunning, outmaneuver all of the creatures, the abyssal dreadspawn, and run back down the path you came. You are the most cunning person. Can you see a way out? Hmm. What was the second option again? I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh my god, this kid. I just, there was, there were three, there was the first is back Dude, to the you're, town. Write your notes. You're meant to be like the nerd of well, the group. Well, I am you're, you're basically forgetting everything. It was the perilous, but per most safe route, if I recall yeah. the wording. Perilous, Look, but safe? I, the, you, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Here's the thing. This is like a collaborative story experience and you're all meant to kind of come up with your own answers to the puzzles, but I'm babying you a little because it's your first time. Okay. Um, really, I, I made three routes. You can like perilously leap from spike to spike and really put some distance between you, but it's a huge drop. It's it's dangerous. Or you could climb down the side or you could try and, you know, get through the dread spawn and just make it back down the path or come up with your own solution. That's kind of the point. All right. I, I think that's pretty clear. All right, now stop breaking character, dude. <clears throat> I say we go back the way we came. These little creatures don't stand a chance for our cunning and slipperiness. <laughs> well said. I'll blast away through them. Blind them, and we run. On three. Two. One. One. Go! <laughs> and I'll use my powers of the arcane arts to Pick blast them. a few of them down using my energy blast. So we're interesting. Hendrax throws his hand as you lift your, your staff. No, you can't risk attacking them here. If you get bogged down in a fight, 
You won't be able to match them all. You're either going to need to slip around the rocks, or it's a fight we cannot win, but a distraction so we can run. You're pulling out a uh, combat. Combat is not the answer all the time. Follow my path, the path of peace. There'll be pieces of me if I jump off that cliff. So your path leads us away from them, then? All paths lead away from danger. You follow them righteously. All right. I can't make that jump. I'm going to order my way down the cliff. I'm already Why don't running. we climb? Let's climb. Do the climb. I'm out. I hitch up my robe and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I've already started to run the way we came, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You guys are climbing down. I was... I'm helping the old man. God. I go the long way and you sit down at the bottom. But thank you. I want, I'm going to slip through the goblins. I've already started, Ooh. so they're closing in. So I, I'm going to go through the path the way we came, and I plan to go around and meet them. Okay. Well, what skill would you like to use? I need to do it quickly. I'm going to use agility. Agility. All right. I'm going to get you to pair that with some wisdom to find the path <laughs> with through the worst of the guards. The so least there's so many dice. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah. laid down <laughs> the felt. All right. Okay. Agility and wisdom. Ah, oh, crap. A good one and a crap one. I Balance haven't decided. I feel like I need to do my GM's calls as Dylan, not as Dave. That's like can my I, challenge. Can I suggest a <laughs> finesse? Dill Dave. No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wisdom. All right. For, if you wanted to do, wait, finesse. Dill in your day. You want to do reflexes finesse. Uh, agility finesse. Agility finesse, because you're really good at it. Oh, wait, no, because I'm going for, I'm getting through them, aren't I? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I went to climb in my head. Yeah, no, you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's. Yeah, okay. You must What's the challenge level? A challenge level? <laughs> uh, what did you roll? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's not, not visible good. on screen. <laughs> okay. First What's of, the challenge level? First of all, you gotta wait for me to tell you the challenge level. Second of all, why are you splitting the party already? These guys are climbing down the hill. You're gonna go the complete opposite because direction. I am a I'm a supporter of the drama of the event. And I I don't know, I just made a decision. I'm trying to commit to it. He likes right. to be annoying, that's I think the answer. What really? do you want to do, Callum? Oh, I'll follow everyone else at this point. I don't want to make it too confusing Wait, for you. Wait, what do you mean everyone? Not you. Oh. <laughs> All right. So. What if you, like, follow us? Like, you pretend to go as if you're about to run through them. I and can, then you, like, slip away. I don't want to be a bother. I uh, hey, hey, can, can I suggest something? Yeah. Uh, can I shield surf my way through and I can grab pockets on the way through. There's like 200 of these things. I don't know why you think you can get past them. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it easy Wait. for you, bro. 200? <laughs> yeah. Did you say 200? Yeah, there's like four? 200 of them. Did you? I missed that very specifically I, I, important I, detail. I literally said there's like li like an entire army of these things swarming oh over the hill. Gosh. Yeah, they're surrounding sure you, you, you in massive oh, I would have totally just <laughs> climbed with you guys. All right, look. It's your first time. We're going to do take backsies. It's All true. right, take backsies. Yeah, it's, it's it's an entire just army. Just All like army. Yeah. Like you're yeah. going to run that way and just then you pretend. just double back and I confuse was them. I trying to trick them exactly. to make them think I was going to run the way I came, but really I'm joining you guys. It really does. Work. So it right. worked. my right. plan. You yeah. tricked them so along. well, you tricked yourself. <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right. Okay. And back in the world of Zoso, our cunning pockets. <laughs> dashes towards them and then turns tail, <laughs> confusing them and buying the old man Oswald time to hitch up his pants so he ah. can climb down <laughs> the cliff. Classic distraction! <laughs> Oswald! You're, you're welcome, I thought the pants man. falling was the distraction. Yes. <laughs> he screams at the sky. <laughs> you, you would like to climb down the cliff. Yes, I would like that very much. So, what would you like to roll? I would like to use my... Basically, my better judgment to and okay. you know experience at judging distance to find my way fairly safely mm -hmm. down the cliff. Okay. And I would like to use fitness. Oh, so you're using your your brains, but you're called because you 
You could have. You could have totally used a brain skill, and I would have been fine. Oh, that's you, outrageous! You just described how you were using what your brains. What an incredible <laughs> flexibility on <laughs> this game system! <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to use uh, understanding. Ah, your understanding. <laughs> to understand the limits of my own damn body. <laughs> <laughs> understanding represents your capacity to learn things quickly, uh, to learn things studiously. It's probably not. Give an example of some brain skills that could. So you could use your intuition, uh, perhaps to get around it, to think about how you might, which rocks are the best ones to grab onto. I see. The microphone was blocking that one. I will choose <laughs> intuition. <laughs> I'm going to move the sheep slightly further. Oh, forward. Microphone. <laughs> All right. Uh, can I get you to pair that with uh, strength? Oh. Challenge level is going to be like three for this. It's a pretty steep climb, but wait, um, oh. before you roll, actually, oh. um, Hendrax raises his hands, pushing out a wave of purple energy towards you all, and you can almost hear an echo of the strum, just a single note of music through this energy as it waves over you, and this light imbues you and it will give you all an additional two dice on this check as he imbues you with his power, his divine power, to aid in this most critical of roles. Oh, this feels a lot less trepidatious now. Thank you, musical man. You're looking uh, rather muscular all of a sudden, old man. Three. <laughs> you, you just make it and um, yeah. Good. <laughs> Hendrax begins to climb down the mountain. H Hendrax or Oswald? Yes, Hendrax. Oh. And with him, Oswald. And with each step barely managing to make it, there's a, a, a light sort of puff of purple wind and energy that catches a footfall and supports Oswald as it becomes apparent that without that blessing, Oswald was sure to slip and fall. Who's next? I will follow. Would you like me to describe which one? Uh, yes. I'm going to choose to be very agile. And use your agility. Uh, and once again, as a physical challenge, uh, mm -hmm. you can impair this with strength, strength and reflexes. You're gonna use just your ability to leap and, and sort of be f finessed uh, with your raw strength. Challenge level three, and you get to extra dice. Mm -hmm. Ah! We lost our... Oh, you! <laughs> we lost our dice cam. Oh, we put the die in dice cam. The drama. You'll never know. I didn't know what happened. <laughs> But how many? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. This is our oh, dice cam oh, now. Oh. That's our, <laughs> that's our dice cam. It's, uh, we're oh. peeking through the trees. <laughs> there you go. That'll have to do. Okay. It's a dice cam. It's sort of more moody, uh, let's sorry. be honest. Uh, Two success? Um, yeah. yeah. Two. Yep. With two successes. Uh oh. Katori's <laughs> foot oh, no. gets a solid hold and then hands a solid hold, but with the impressive strength known to her, there is a misjudgment, and the rock cracks and breaks in her hands as she overexerts herself and literally crumbles her hand oh no. to dust. My muscles, they're too strong. And begins potentially to fall. There is an opportunity for you two in this dire and perilous situation Use your knack to add an automatic win and match the challenge. I will do that. So you expend a knack. And Katori, sensibly, doing the only logical thing in this world, flexes so hard <laughs> as falling <laughs> that the shards of rock in her hands recompress and crush into single pillars, jagged sharp spike, <laughs> and while falling 40, 50 meters, just shoves them both back into the rock wall like ice I meant to do that. And drags down <laughs> as this mesa goes through and then 
<laughs> Restabilizes his Pulls stuff. up level with Oz, where just, you know, like a cat going down and casting. <laughs> all right, all right. No need to show off. Looking down at this having happened, um, I, I just look across at, at uh, Celestia and say, <clears throat> so no pressure. Um, I think we have to meet that in style or... I, maybe we just need to climb down. As you have this momentary discussion, Ah, it's a good thing you knew we were deathly afraid of heights and do not wish to step within four meters of the barrier. I am terrified to look over, or else we'd be stabbing you to death right now, says the leader of a horde of two dozen of the Abyssal Dreadspawn, who sort of tentatively are tiptoeing ever so closer to the edge and at the back, Vorath. Weaklings, I will get them myself! As he begins to stride, backhanding his minions out of the way. Oh, Vorath isn't afraid of height. Otherwise, I would suggest we could have just set up camp here. We should go. Yes, agreed. <laughs> what would you like to roll? Ah, uh, it's prof... Ladies first, I say to Celestia. Uh, the light of the, of the moon glistens off Vorath's oiled grey abdomen. Uh, can I a uh, power, please? You'd like to use your power? Yeah. All right. And given the jagged and torn rocks, we've had several falls, several pieces of rocks broken by Katori's descent, the situation has changed, and I'm going to get you to pair it with your finesse as you actually have to sort of lean, balance, and twist, grab, grab hold, stretch yourself, and basically coordinate your movement really carefully to avoid these crumbling rock holds and damaged areas. All right, cool. That is my bad. You got this, though. As Katori is just <laughs> <laughs> climbing down with these handmade rock <laughs> pillars. Oh, is there a plus two? I thought that was just for you. Yeah. No, that's no, for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. That's plus two. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, so Celestia uh, runs and lets out a big like, ah, yeah. And then, yeah. Describe, you can describe your own descent if you'd like your hero moment. You've got like yep. five successes. How do you climb down? She gracefully jumps off the cliff and like lands def definitely on her feet with power. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Superhero landing. Um, dude, Callum, bro. Yeah, what? Like, how's your science class going, man? I thought you were the getting good grades. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it took you an hour, hour to climb this hill to the watchtower. It took you an hour, two hours, I think, to climb up here. What's this got to do with science class, you, dude? You just said your character jumped off a cliff. And she's really cool, dude. It would be pretty cool. Is she it possible? sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, How's your science going, What are the confines Dylan? of the system? Uh, Dude, what is and is not allowed? She's got like jacked cards, man. Well, look, you gotta kind of be semi-realistic or else there's no stakes. Uh, look, right. maybe, maybe I, she jumps halfway down the cliff. I'm just picturing She-Ra leaping into the air in a dramatic fashion. Oh, I love that show. It's so cool. I mean, it's, it's, it. it's fine. Look. Uh, it's it just kind of undermines like the other guy's efforts a little. Okay, bit. okay, fine, fine. It's cool, fine. but she jumps off and lands somewhere halfway, I guess, holding onto a tree branch. All right, but she does it cool. cool. Yeah, like, yeah. really cool. You could still keep that bit. You could yeah. probably do like a flip around like a tree. Oh, branch. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, flips yeah, are, flips yeah. are cool. Yeah, mm. there's but, always a branch sticking out of the halfway off the cliff. You know, yeah. we can always yeah. somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I like that. As long as we're aware, we're gonna be like fun, but not completely ridiculous. Yeah? Sure. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, now we set the boundaries. We're gonna play for a bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Celestia, with a deft swing around the branch, landing gracefully, moves faster than any other so far down this cliff face, leaving only pockets to prove himself. Hmm. With time running incredibly short as I gaze at this beast of a creature mere feet away from me, I take the moment to waggle my cheeky eyebrows and then follow behind. 
using my agility to do so deftly before he can snatch me. And to the same following Celestia's lead, you can use your finesse. Challenge level. Three, same as everyone. Plus two. <laughs> two, with a knack point spent, oh. so that the traversal doesn't slip me. And all the adventurers clamber, some expertly, some inexpertly, down the side of the cliff, and as they go, Vorath shouts, Wiggle your eyebrows at me, thief. <laughs> For the last time, I will rape them from your face and wear them upon my own. That because he doesn't up. have eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You can get caterpillars for that. <laughs> All right. I just, I just love the idea that you can hear that from the, from the, top, at the top. You just hear, you have caterpillars. <laughs> Very mad. Bogus, did you antagonize the death of all creation? Uh, I mean, don't I usually? Bogus! <laughs> That's where his little theme song jingle would, would play. play. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Just it was the TV yeah. show. Yeah, okay, cool. So, you arrive at the bottom <clears throat> of the mesa after some climbing. You can hear the shouts of the abyssal dread spawn, but you can also see them. In the distance, running along the desolate plains towards you, the army of darkness has risen. Hendrax says, These are dire times. My friends, we have not seen these foul beasts on the lands for centuries. We must head north. There is only one choice for us. We must go. And take message to the capital. We must go to Paradise City. We must seek the queen or the prince and deliver our message. If they cannot raise an army, the world will fall. That sounds like a good decision. Mm. And surely we can find more allies that will help us. We have seen the army firsthand. Time is as short for anyone as it was for us at the top of that hill. We must make haste. But how many days travel? It was six hours to cross town, but I fear it's up to you. Do we detour to the town we've spent the last few months in peace? The people we know, the fine bakery, but risk wasting hours that could be spent heading towards the capital. Tis a fine bakery, we but I feel that we owe them at least that. We can give them warning, mm. and then hopefully acquire horses. There will be no use for horses. By the way, you are all journeying this time. You're all obviously making haste and running, or at least jogging yeah. towards your destination while you have this conversation. <clears throat> We do not want to lead these <clears throat> monsters straight to town, though. There is no room for horses along the spine. We must travel along the watchtowers, along the peaks of the mountains, all the way to the capital. To head to cross town is a detour we could take, but who knows what that would mean. Otherwise, it's straight to the tower, cross town tower, the first watchtower on our long road. The choice is yours, my friends. I will not sway you. I'm a man of peace. I've done swaying. <laughs> Whichever <laughs> path we want to tread, I'm there for it. But uh, I think the watchtower might be the best port of call. I'd be happy to scout ahead, see if there is any trouble awaiting us. And perhaps if we fatigue, we could set up camp. This sounds smart. And as you ponder your choice, travel north. Your thoughts rest with Sylvia Hearthstone, kneading her bread in the bakehouse at Borderland Baked Goods. And how horrible it would be for her to be stabbed repeatedly <laughs> by the Abyssal Dreadspawn, <laughs> were the town not warned of your presence. 
for all actions have consequences, and that is the burden of a hero. All right, so um, I'm just gonna do some DM interludes that are just like telling you to roll dice, just for clarity, without needing to go to the 80s. Because it makes sense without fully pulling back to just be like, all right, so I'm going to need you to roll some checks. Otherwise, I can just say that. Up to you. What do you want? Yeah, You're getting really confusing. <laughs> There's like four layers of voices. <laughs> so sometimes I'm going to just ask you to roll checks. I can do that as Dylan. I, I can do that I as me. I think when you do Dylan, we pull out. I okay. think otherwise you just talk as Dave. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I have permission to be Dave. Yeah. 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 If, if, yeah. if you right. want to make a roll but also like respond to you, you should do Dylan. Okay, yeah. but otherwise it's Dave. Check. Yeah. You yeah. gotta Dave set the works. ground rules for yeah. the viewers. Similar yeah. yeah. question as well. Like if I like needed you explaining cannot, I was for gonna Nat, do the same thing. Do I ask as me or Katori or me? We can ask out of character questions as us. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to everyone watching this. It is just we're just trying to figure out that we place to make it as understandable for you as possible. But if you would prefer, let, if, if there we is, want if, to if never in leave comments, <laughs> it's fun. If, <laughs> in, if in episode two we get a deluge of comments that say no, be in character the whole time. GM as Dave yeah. asks questions as your characters. I would we would we do I that? Do I think so? But I think if people like the balance, I think let the people talk. Yeah. You know, let, you will choose. Yeah, right. you know. I agree. But I do want a clip of Dave screaming, Can I be Dave? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can I be Dave? <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, I broke down. Okay, so I'm going to get you all <laughs> to roll. Mm. Now, sometimes the GM makes you make rolls that you don't get to pick an element of when that particular thing is, is very specific. And this particular thing is I need you to all make a resistance and there's another there's, there's something I'm looking for and I'm not seeing it what are we doing you're heading there <gasps> What's is this for an endurance? What's our like willpower? Our we've 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 lost our, our. We had two skills that no longer exist on the sheet that were like our. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like a mental resolve kind of ability. I'd just go. It would be resistance this is for a long journey. Yeah, a long journey. Mm -hmm. I'd go resistance, resistance wisdom. Is the first one. That's what I was leaning towards. Yeah, yeah. Resistance mm -hmm. wisdom. It's like how you, you need the wisdom to sort of know how to pace yourself, where to, what paths to tread. How to maintain your energy, blah blah blah. Navigation. That's the role. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, cool. Crap. I have a low wisdom. Challenge yeah. <laughs> level <Thank> two. <laughs> Challenge level two. No. What you need? Just three. I've got enough. Oh, cool. <laughs> what do you cool need? if we had a dice cam, bro. Has it run out of battery, or is it just that the cable? Why don't you murder it, boss? Oh, oh we're back. Wait. Yeah. Hey. I knew it was just if I just touch a cable gently. No one, no one touches a cable caress. Caress. Yeah, that's all I need to do. Just a cable caress. Oh, Challenge first. level? Two. Two. Okay. Oswald. Oswald succeeds. Ooh. Oof. He's, as, as Oswald marches on this journey, you all note as he hikes up his wizard's robes, he has the old powerful calves. Sort of like someone, <laughs> someone he's like holding his dress yeah, up. He's like holding his feet like. Yeah, because you're at make, you're making pace. Yeah. yeah, he's got that that look of someone who was maybe like a big into rowing when they were young, but <laughs> and even as an older that. person, he's he like still has these huge all cars. All the time, so, yeah, he's he's like, yeah. Yeah. so and he's just powering through, absolutely powering. I through. did the horse. I was just thinking of the rest of you. <laughs> so kind. I shall scout ahead. I've got two pockets. Mm -hmm. Just with with a sweaty brow, more so than uh, Oswald journeys and makes the pace. Katori. Two successes as well. Build for strength, but not necessarily endurance. I guess it's my turn. Celestia, three successes. Leading with Oswald, not breaking a sweat. Your journey. Cow walking. <laughs> and Hendrax walks as if he is feather light, gracefully keeping pace with the best of you. Your journey north takes four and a half hours at speed. You look to the west 
and you see the hearth fire and smoke of Crosstown and remember the fond times you've had there, knowing you are not stopping. Behind you, when you look back, smoke rises from the now burning far tower and a horde of small plumes of smoke torches held aloft by the Dreadspawn army slowly poisons the horizon to the south. Ahead of you, a climb, a mountain covered in forest that leads towards Crosstown Tower, the watchtower closest to the place you've recently called home. But as you step underneath the boughs of the trees, your alertness must remain high. The keenest eyed among you, who here has the highest acuity? I have that, four. Oh, you bastard, I thought I was. <laughs> Katori's cat ears. Fox. Fox ears. Tw- tw- twitch. Can I get you to make an acuity <clears throat> intelligence mm-hmm. check. Three. Three successes. Katori's eyes dart to where the ears lead, but you cannot quite make out what you know to be there something in the tree line moving. Mm. A rustle here, bigger than a plant or animal, but so light and deft on their feet. Yet, despite the presence, you do not feel an immediate sense of threat. But you do feel that you are being watched as soon as you enter the forest boundaries. We must be careful. I feel there's something watching us. Almost. Creepy. You are certain? It could just be the little critters in the forest, but it seems unnatural. Just be careful. As you journey up, making your way the last few steps, you've kept pace, you're faster, pushing onwards beyond the Abyss of Dreadspot. They move with the speed of an army, whereas you move at the speed of lone scouts. You climb to the top, and you see the crossroads, Crosstown Tower. There is activity, movement, and as you get breaking the tree line and cresting the top, You see a handful of guards running around, scurrying around, carrying armfuls of packs, bags, gear, arms, weapons. But there are very few of them. You know the garrison of the Crimson Guard here numbers at least a dozen, and yet you only see three guards. As we approach, um... It has been a long journey. We're somewhat parched and sweating, but uh, we approach friendly, and I say, You there, guards, I am assuming you have heard the news of the fallen guards up near the tower. Is that you, Pockets? Uh, wait, I haven't, I haven't robbed you before, have I? Oh. No. Or is there a bounty on my head again? I hate it when that happens. You've been on your best behaviour since you've been in Crosstown, aren't you? Always, of course. That's right. Never better. Now that I think about... Ah, never mind, it's not time for that. Yes, pockets, yes. We see the tower burning to the south. It's not good. We're gathering supplies to take it down to Crosstown. Ah, Lieutenant Amelia is in charge, though. You might want to speak to her. Lieutenant Amelia. 
perhaps uh, some of the more commanding presence could represent our little party and impart any news as we need to act with haste. And I'm sort of nod at Celestia. <laughs> well, certainly, of course I can. And you spot the figure of Lieutenant Amelia, tall, six foot, raven black hair pulled into a tight ponytail. A beautiful face marred only by a scar that runs between her eyebrow and across her cheek. But it is not a pretty scar. It is a scar that healed rough and ragged. She looks towards you, locking eyes. You've raised a pint together at the pub on one of the rare ventures when the guards from the tower came into the town. You don't know her well. She seems busy, stressed. She wears the crimson tabard of the Red House and underneath glittering mail can be seen well-kempt and well-equipped for a border guard. Do you approach? Yes. I will approach with Celestia. I will lurk behind. Newcomers! What can I do for you? Why do you approach the tower? Oh, I believe we've met before. I am Celestia. Yes, the rather devilish woman from the tavern. Hmm. That's me. Fierce with sword arm. Mm -hmm. As good as I, I imagine. Ah, and you were mean with a pint, if I do believe. And she throws out her hand in a sort of soldier's handshake, recognizing your f military equipment as mm -hmm. well. I do. I, I do the same. You clasp mm. hands firmly. Um, her grip is strong. She looks you up and down. You look unragged. You've been... Ah, uh, you've come from the south, yes? That is correct. Ah, uh, it's terrible, isn't it? They're back. We dispatched the commander and most of our complement of guards. There was reports of movement to the south uh, two days ago. No one have returned. And when we saw the fires, we feared the worst. And now we see, with our spyglass, the armies come. Is it as bad as we think? Well, we escaped nearly 200 of them, and the, there was that other fellow with the, the abs, all, all of the abs. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't remember his name. Borath. That, that one, oh, yes. Skull. I remember the abs. I remember though. the abs, part, yes. <laughs> he had no hair or eyebrows. Borath. No eyebrows. Yeah. The world destroyer. The very same. The color uh, fades believe from her face. you mean Ruinbringer? He has many names. Thief. It's ironic that she says that because I was going to say, as she sort of like says that snappily, when all this all consuming conversation is happening, uh, of course, Pockets is just sort of scouting just for some opportunities to pick some stuff while everything is being upheaved. So I just wanted to mention that. Mm. It is I'm, I'm going to, you know, pinch some would stuff. Would you like to attempt? I to would like to do that. <laughs> I would like to use my <laughs> deft of hand okay. to have. <coughs> picked a few little things though you know the they're all leaving anyway they're, they're all going it's all just going to get left here and then burnt down you're just, you're just I'm helping them leave I'm yeah of course Lighting you know I'm doing a favour here I'm, so I'm doing a common civic service so what do I pair my deft of hand with charisma Beautiful. As you basically trying to play the the um, wolf in sheep's clothing, you're trying yeah. to play the but yeah. Challenge, Challenge level. level. These are guards. So it'll be against their acuity, perhaps. Mm, watch guards and a watch captain, lieutenant. It's gonna be challenge level four. Ooh. To steal under the eyes of the lieutenant. Yes! No guard. Three. Oh. Um. Mm -hmm. I don't you I can't waste my <laughs> knack. As <laughs> so I like it chose to pipe in at that moment and I <laughs> happen to just be holding <laughs> an item. As Pockets reaches and slides something out of a bag that he hasn't even quite thought to recognize yet. <laughs> A firmer hand, a firmer grip than he is capable of, grabs his wrist suddenly. He hadn't noticed. And the third guard, Donovan. Uh, pockets by name, I see. Oh, 
Oh, this. I was just helping you pack, of course. I was. A man who would steal supplies going to Crosstown. People who are sure to be beset by war. No, that wouldn't be you, would it? Now, what, I judge very carefully. In fact, I knew you wouldn't be needing a... a and I look down at what I'm holding. What am, <laughs> what am I holding? Um, children's medicine. <laughs> oh, I suppose you will be needing this. Uh, here you go. Uh, That's perfect. So I'd help you pack. Donovan, like, has, has his... I'm going to use charm. To okay. sort of soften that. Soften it, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, you can use your charm uh, with... I, like, have, like, dimples <laughs> and, like, just, like, these wisdom. big eyes. Some okay. empathy in this situation. <laughs> challenge level. Try and, like, kind of realise what you the child for uh, the <laughs> Yeah, again, challenge level's going to be cost. really high on all this. Uh, <laughs> but it, just, are you just trying to lessen it? So challenge yeah. level three. And with three dice. Oh, my God. I'm batting my eye. After just this. So hard! Yeah, nah. Oh, no. After this, I'd like to deal damage by rolling my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Donovan's sword is drawn from his scabbard and goes to your wrist that he's holding and slides the children's medicine just enough to shave the arm hair off the patch of your arm that is exposed and push the medicine back into the bag. And he's a says, very quirky 80s cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. I didn't think you'd be so silly to steal from the Red House. Yeah. Uh, never. <laughs> Again. And then he lets go of you. But, uh, yeah, definitely with an air of threat and, and forcefulness. Well, what company you keep, Celestia? Yes, they're an odd bunch. <laughs> so why are you here, if not to lend aid? Yeah, <clears throat> we just came from the Burning Tower. I fear things didn't go well for those inside. I feared as much. Hendrax speaks up. We are going to take word to Paradise City. We will make the long journey, and we will tell the Queen to raise an army. We will do this in honor for our country and for the sanctity of the kingdom and the world at large. Well, it is good that there is some among you with just hearts and intentions. We go to Crosstown then, safe knowing the message will be sent. We will probably die defending the people, <gasps> but we wish you Better fates. You look tired. I recommend you rest here for the night. We will leave enough supplies, a bag, to aid in your journey. But we will go and arm and prepare the citizens as best we can. It is greatly appreciated. And our minds and fortune go with you. Do not discount your odds. I can see you've been through a lot. And you got uh, this. you've got all the medicine those children could need. <laughs> Everyone oh. will be fine, I'm sure of it. You checked it, you bucket! <laughs> You're not a very good thief. I excuse you. Is that what you I, do? You, we've just met, and you dare. I am. And a, I saw it. Well. <laughs> So I fold my arms and go. <laughs> I do not wish my last conversation in the company of adventurers to be one of bickering. May your nobility shine in the dark. Especially you, Pockets. I... Farewell. Be strong. I have faith in you. As the Crimson Guard, Lieutenant of the Southern Rangers, I bid you adieu. And she spins her half cape, picks up a bag, and dramatically leaves with the two guards carrying all the supplies with a large donkey that is laden down towards the town. I didn't hear everything she said, but I heard the word shine and then pockets and then remembered how fun it is to have shiny things in my pockets. They might have something left over. Oh, it's a good suggestion. I might have a little Just look around. steal from the inanimate the building. Lady Blackthorn That's a great idea, right. and I wander off to... <laughs> 
and his pockets wanders off into the building, <laughs> leaving the rest of you there. Hendrax re-says the exact same sentence. Like, he got cut. He just is like, <laughs> as Lady Blackthorn said. Uh, right, he's an odd one, isn't he? Obsessed with the material when there's so much more going on. The I, only thing that could go worse would be to leave him alone where we found him. Where did you find him? There's gutter the somewhere. Ditch, yeah. <laughs> my, oh dear. my dear Oswald, I know for a fact. And Hendrax, like, gestures out as if he's, like, gently stroking your face in a really affectionate, like, parental, like, caring way. But he's not t- even close to touching you. It's just, like, <laughs> the way he's gesturing. <laughs> but he's, like, four meters away from you. He's like, Oswald, I know for a fact that you are a wizard beyond compare with mastery of the elements and a hand that can lead Spark to Tinder and make a hearth fire that will warm our bones tonight. Might you light the kindling that I gather for you <laughs> and prepare our camp. I love his flair so much. It's so good. <laughs> well, That was quite the request. <clears throat> Say it like that. I would be honored. <clears throat> All right, so you can use one of the features that you have uh, as as your class or your sort of skill tree, uh, which is basically to create small fires at will without any kind of thing. So you can like like as if you can you can put your thumb up and a little flame like a lighter can come out. You can just use very minor flame mm-hmm. pyromancy. Um, so yes, you may use that if you would like, uh, to create a fire without needing to roll anything. You can just like, (laughs) run light, let it, get a good campfire going. Look out everyone, master at work here. (laughs) As your thumb goes out, (laughs) a little (laughs) zippo. Stand back! (laughs) And, uh, Hendrax, uh, looks to Katori and Celestia. Yes. Shall we gather some firewood? I think so. Come with me. I see some trees and kindling. And you walk off as a trio. So, Katori, you never did tell me. Why did you journey to these lands so far from your foxy lady friends? I thought they said no prying questions. <laughs> well, I thought given the world might be ending. It could be no good to know who we fight with. I fear that your strength and your stamina is above my companions, and I may have a task that would see you separate from us. Really? But I wanted to know why it is you fight before I send you off on a dangerous task to a place full of dangerous women. I am one of those. All right, but... You cannot tell anyone, or you. My lips are sealed. Don't laugh. I uh, trained a lot back in my hometown to be a knight or a guard, but it is not exactly what I wanted. It was uh, a quiet life that I would like. I want to own a farm with chickens and goats and Cows, just me and the animals. I think it will be peaceful, as you say, Hendrax. Somebody else talk now. Peace is the highest goal we can aspire towards, living in harmony with one another, being generally groovy and having a great time. Really what we all could do if only the man wasn't getting us down all the time. By, by the man, you, you mean evil, right? Of course, yeah. I literally mean... Face of, of evil. <laughs> I'm <laughs> the evil man. I'm, I'm literally referring the to Vorath, the Runebringer, the <laughs> evil man, the one... Right. You saw his abs glistening in the starlight. <laughs> I didn't see them. If anything is evil, it clearly is that. A man with no face, but Schwarzenegger-style body. No it's eyebrows. Made, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Celestia, why do you journey here? Well, I, f- I fight for all that's good. I come from a family that was, we had 
because I had sisters and brothers and a wonderful mother and father. And then one day, a, an evil, evil, evil man came to our village. And the other evil man, yes. The other evil man. There are many. <laughs> many and, evil men. And he tore the town cinder. Everything was burning fire. I lost all my brothers and sisters and my, my mother and my father. And now that I think about it, the, the, the man, he had a, a lot of abs. And he also had no eyebrows. Was it... Did you suffer a preemptive early attack from Morath the Runebringer and we didn't know? You, a, a, an orphan hero, you'd be surprised how common that is. <laughs> It but is it is terrible. no less tragic. I'm here for you, he says. I, I appreciate that. Thank and you. I, no. Well, yes, that is why I fight. I fight in the name of good and all that is righteous. Well, we should go and sit by the fire. Oswald has it burning, and I can see mm -hmm. by the gleam of that two-foot-long halberd, the micro-halberd. <laughs> you don't see the micro-halberd. Pockets are stolen. <laughs> What is a micro halberd? It's a halberd for it's no more. for no mish warriors. Oh, of course! <laughs> <laughs> That's silly of me. I forgot the gnomes exist in this particular world. They haven't been seen world. for centuries, but oh. people do often adorn their houses with their little arms and armor. It's quite cute. <laughs> their arms and armor. Not their physical arms. Oh, okay. Like their weaponry. <laughs> How a king or a soldier would have a shield and a crest of swords morbid. sitting above the fireplace. It's just casually. <laughs> the gnomish war gear is more of a small piece of equipment. It's like a little micro thing. It's a collector's item. You anyway. micro a lot, is that? Celestia <laughs> saw a coat of arms once and was horrified. <laughs> <laughs> I come from a very strange town. Now I want to see fan art of Celestia no, please don't. wearing a coat of arms. <laughs> please I... draw Celestia's coat of arms. <laughs> I appear to have misunderstood. I come from a very strange town. I don't think it is you who is strange. He has strange descriptions. So, let us go back to the campfire. And you all join the campfire pockets with this very shiny silver uh, miniature halberd that he's found uh, that looks quite valuable. Oh, cool. I, yeah, I, that's, that's why you found, that, was your, that was your loot. You have a micro halberd. Okay. It's two, <laughs> it is, it's two foot long. It's like this big, but I mean, it's a halberd, so that's yeah. pretty short. You could use yeah. it as kind of like a hand axe. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Skewer. Hendrax, welcome back. Toothpick. You can see I've gotten the fire going. and You haven't even brought me the kindling yet. Well, we got you some very good logs. I'll burn all night. Excellent. I've asked my friends, and they've told me in confidence important things about themselves, but... You're very confident ask... people. I'm confident in you, Oswald. And then he gestures again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, how how long? Like you guys have only known each other for like a couple like, of like days. Like Oswald and I have known each other for 26 years. <laughs> We've journeyed uh -huh. together... It's been that long already. <laughs> Celestia, you do not know all things in your youth. Apparently not. There are backstories to characters that are established in a yes and fashion. It's very important. <laughs> so, Oswald, why do you fight with these young whippersnappers? Why? Oh, you're asking for their benefit. Okay. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> I know, you know how you. F we know we we, know, we go way back. I I know you know, but I yes, we fought I, I will, I will the tell them Darash no. war together. Yes, that was the battle where I swore a life of peace after being soaked in the blood of thousands, the last time. Anyway, I should stop reminiscing. It was Osborne, quite the battle. Continue. Well, there's been much trouble in these lands. Thorax is just the latest calamity, and hopefully he won't be the last this world sees. But my order has become fat, lazy, and downright narcissistic in their superiority. They've lost their way, 
and a good few many magic items of great power that were the items of office, if you will. I wish to restore those items and remind them of what we once stood for in this world. There is a depth of nobility to you, Oswald, that I've always respected, and I truly hope in this journey you can redeem some of the lost valor of your order. I'm just old and grumpy, <laughs> but you can keep telling that to me if you like. <clears throat> Pockets, mm-hmm. you, so lost in the adoration of the material, what is it that's, that makes you strive to save the world when you would steal children's medicine from their pockets? I, well, I, hmm. You're asking me to dig, dig deeper. Uh, we could I, die together tomorrow in battle. We should know who we shed blood for. Yes, I suppose you're right. A little sentimentality never hurt anyone. It hurts to say, and it's not a common thing to hear, but I was an orphan. Ah, yes, as I said, unfortunately many orphan heroes. Yes, well, in the particular orphanage I grew up in, there were many, many other children and no adults really to supervise, and I was the runt of the litter, and they always took my things from me, and I was always doing without, without meals, without things to bring me joy. I got mixed up in bad sorts on the street to eventually figure out how to fend for myself, Until one day I saw someone pick the pockets of a nobleman and end up so laden with gold that he couldn't carry it all. And some of it dropped and rolled towards me in the alleyway. And I bought myself my first hearty meal and swore that one day I would pick pockets as well as that man. And the coins might roll away from me and feed a few young'uns on the way. He was wearing a really nice coat too, so that wouldn't hurt. (laughs) So you rob from the rich to give to the poor? Yes, uh, but I'm also very poor, so I figure I should also be somewhat beneficiary, but it is of good intent. A very rare functional example of literal trickle-down economics, (laughs) as the coins you spill trickle down the street towards people who need them. I suppose you're right. Adventure with stout friends as the company we have gathered and you will soon find your need for material things fades away as your heart is filled and your soul is warmed and your belly is full with the company you keep. Heroes, we should rest tonight. For tomorrow, we set out and uh, go towards the north, towards the city. Uh, sorry to break immersion. Um. Uh, so it's 10 to 10, and your sister's coming back at 10 o'clock. And, you know, you're meant to be in bed, and you guys aren't meant to be here. She's gonna oh, get at 10? Dude, I yeah, didn't realize the time. Wait! Yeah, so. I look, thought we were oh, just no. getting started! No, no, like. Yeah, time this is flies when you're having fun, fun guys. Okay, wait, I, I can't let you guys stay here. Stop right there! We cannot finish tonight without being granted the uh, privilege of experience I'm sorry. to upgrade our characters. Did you just say granted? Grant, uh, grant, grant. bequeathed, uh, be, uh, be un, uh, what? All right, given. all right. Look, here. Uh, I want to level up. Look, Meg, to be honest tonight, you've been pretty cool letting this be here. Uh, cooler than I thought you were going to be. Um, I kind of thought you'd... You'd just be like a big stiff. Yeah, but, uh, you were really cool. Wow. You seem to be really enjoying it. I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or not. Hey, but if it's coming from me, it's always look, a compliment. Yeah, it's, yeah it's actually, it's fun, okay? But we still can't go too late. All right, look, let me wrap it up really quick. I, because like, yeah, there's I mean, no way you're going <laughs> to. We got to finish up. Yeah, uh, okay, okay. We'll, we'll be quick. The morning passes. You all rise before dawn. As the sun is cresting the hill, knowing you can spare no more time, and this would probably be your last rest. Your last good rest before being on the run for a while. You must head north. Head north along the lower part of the spine towards Midnight Lamp. The last watchtower on the southern part of the 
continent, there is a great channel, the Rift Stream channel that separates the borderlands to the south from the great, great kingdom of Sabathia to the north, the place you head to the capital. There is a dangerous crossing ahead of you and Midnight Lamp is your last stop before going there. But before you set out or as you set out, Hendrax approaches Katori. Katori, you are the strongest I have seen in a long time. You literally crushed rocks to dust in your hands and climbed down a mesa like an absolute badass. Genuinely, it was really cool. Thank you. <clears throat> I practice it a lot. There is something we must ask of you. Go on. It is not just Paradise City that we must warn. We must try and gather allies. We must try and gather hope. There is a place to the northeast that lies apart from our path, apart from our journey. It is the place called the Storm Maiden Temple. It is home, a fortress temple to the legendary Storm Maidens. They are uniquely imbued with divine electricity. And those ladies, those electric ladies, rule over their land. But they are secluded for only the strongest can endure the static sparks of divine power amongst them. If you can go to them, bring their aid, get them to fight, you could delay the armies and spare thousands of lives. Would you take this burden, take this message, risk your life as a hero, and head to the Storm Maiden Temple? I will do this. If I return home a hero, they will surely let me have my farm. Look after them. If you succeed, if they open the gates for you, and as they have never done for any others, that you will light their great ship. Meet us sometime in the north. We would greatly desire your aid again. Until then. Go, hero. And you may have an opportunity to say goodbye to Katori. She runs to the Storm Maiden Temple. Friends, I have a job to do. You will not see me for a while. Fare thee well, brave fox lady. Thank you, brave old man. I've barely known you a day, and yet I shall miss you terribly. And I throw my arms around her. <laughs> it's very, like, 80s cartoon. I love it. And I would like to try and pick her <laughs> okay. I'm going to get a, I'm going to get an opposed roll in this yeah. instance. <laughs> 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 roll that's not against her, uh, one of her stats. Ooh. Oh, sure. You can roll against her acuity. What's your yeah. acuity? Four. Okay, challenge level yeah. four. Okay, cool. So I'm using deft of hand. Yep. <laughs> What's he taking? Paired with the narrator. How are you approaching it? You fast or Stra clever? <laughs> um, I'm you know, you're going charisma again. You're, you're trying to charm yeah, your way yeah. through this situation. Yeah, I think so, yeah, because I'm definitely charisma. Mm, yeah. yeah, okay. Mm. All right. Three. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh, I'm going to use oh, He's doing oh, it. I'm going to use a knack. I'm oh, using a knack. <laughs> what do you steal? A token. Uh, uh, what, are, what are my options? Are you, do you, want, you can roll. Like, I feel like I shouldn't often get to choose. What are you trying to steal? Like, I'm just, I'm something just, good or just it's something? It's just an impulse. Okay. Can, just can something. I, something to remember. Something it's mine. just the <laughs> lucky <laughs> dip. It's like, a little fox toy. <laughs> <laughs> little fox toy. Have you got it in your inventory? It's like a little flute in the shape of a fox, like whittle wood in the shape of a fox head. Sure. I like that. I'm going with what Murray said. You get a little flute fox, fox that when flute. you it, when you look at it later, it's a flute in carved, yeah, cool. hand carved by. <laughs> it's the I don't know. It could be horribly traumatic, like Katori's mom or something. It could be. You'll never know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. As I pull away, a single tear is rolling down my cheek. Which is compellingly distracting enough that I can put it in my pocket <laughs> in it's some really plain moving. sight. It I was a pleasure. I didn't realize we bonded like that, but... I wish you all the best on your perilous journey. I will uh, put a hand on his shoulder and say, you got this. 
And okay. you, you have a noble goal. As do you. Thank you. Hmm. But uh, don't tell anyone, <laughs> or I will know, and I will find you. <laughs> Happy <laughs> travels. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pockets. And then a pat pat. <laughs> Halfway decent of you. You make a man yet. Well, I do strive to be the best version of myself. Of myself possible. And I shall oh. endeavor for the rest of my days to. Uh, what was that? Yeah, I heard a, a door. That was the door. That was the door. We need to go. We need to go. Go, go, go. go. Oh, no. Okay. Um. Oh, it's Grab ten. the food. Grab the, grab the oh, ice. Whoa, I got a plan. Oh, shh, shh, shh. Wait, is that the parents? Oh, shh, shh, shh. I've done, look, trust me, sneaking out of girls' houses is kind of my thing. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> what we got to do is, um, Meg, a little bit uh, you. great playing with you. Really great. Um, Can you go and, like, distract Melvin's sister? Maybe go up and check on, what was your little sister's name? Sarah. Sarah. Yeah, go check on her, but take the older sister up and we'll kind of book it out the front door. There's there's a window, right? Like, I could totally... I'm not climbing out a basement window. What got all this stuff? Melvin, do you want to come with me? Yeah, yeah. Distract her. Just say, like, maybe you had a bad dream or or something. Just cough loudly when it's clear, okay, Melvin? I was just going to annoy you, but all right. Okay, okay. I spent eight hours in a locker. I could just stay here. You're going to shut up, bro. Cody, you're following them. Callum? He's going with you. Dylan you actually like Dylan actually like sweeps you under an arm and like puts his hand over your mouth right. and he's just like oh, great, that's fair. Go, 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 right. go. Okay, get yeah. up. This is fine. And in the house. as everyone's shenanigans start to uh, start to come into effect, they sneak upstairs, distract Melvin's older sister, and allow the rest of the gateway party to slip out the front door. We bring an end to the first session of their game. Don't worry, Dylan will award you experience at the start of the next session. Hey. But hey. Uh, thank you everyone for episode two thank of you. A and Call thank to Quest. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Yeah. It's been so great yeah. to have you. It was lots of fun. Thank How, you. Yeah, it's the first time jumping into a, some streamed role play, so I, I hope you've enjoyed it. I you've know. done a great job. It was really cool. Really cool experience. Thanks it, for having me. It was really satisfying to be our characters for a, like our characters' characters yeah. for, for a significant period of time. Yeah. And cool. also thanks to our patrons who have a post-production scroll now. Yeah, so. manually hand-scrolled <laughs> scroll. It's very impressive to watch. It's amazing. Uh, Way more impressive than the one that was that didn't exist. Yes, yeah, it yeah. is. But, so, but I just want you to know that Liam, Tabletop Times editor, manually physically <laughs> scrolls it across the screen with a mouse. <laughs> a screen recording. No. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm just... Really? <laughs> he did one of them. I'm sure he's. I'm sure that was the emergency one. Okay. But I right. saw him do it once where he said, like, right. I manually scrolled this across the thing. Because he had to do it like that. And yeah. uh, anyway, <laughs> Look, manual scroll. Amazing. This is, but also a huge thank you to our patrons and our uh, uh, donors and all this stuff because we've been able to do some little upgrades recently and we're, we're getting there. Jen was helping manage the mixer. We have some extra mm. Steam Decks and you'll notice the microphones didn't cut out once. So yeah, it was so much better than last week. Sorry, good, good work, so, Jazz. Thank good you, work. everyone. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, patrons. Yeah. Um, thank you all. Now we're going to hang out. Do not party. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Bye, bye, video. Goodbye. Goodbye. This is the... This is this is the Breakfast Club outro music. Dance. This is like us walking we away. Do and, that, right? and then they went off to <laughs> and they never had a better summer ever again. Something like exactly. that. Right. See us. <laughs> <laughs>